Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Those of you that are frequent viewers, if you haven't subscribed already, please do. Those who are here for the first time, I hope you enjoy and that you are going to hit that subscribe button at the end of the video. But for those that have been here before, you'll know that there's a couple of things that I love. I love the weird and unusual, and I love cars with an interesting story. And today, I bring you both, although this is technically not a car. Today, I am in the mighty Rover Maestro van. Now, some of you might laugh at that. Some of you might be sitting there going, a what? Now, I personally had sort of forgotten that there ever was such a thing as a Maestro van. And the Maestro, having been a product of British Leyland, is essentially the butt of many a motoring joke in England. But you can't deny the fact that they were very important cars. And the van in particular is a vehicle that for many was essentially their career. Now, when I showed my friends pictures of this bright yellow beastie, a lot of them asked me, was this an old British telecom van? Because these were the default vehicle for many a BT worker and others as well, all over the country. Now, this wasn't, this was actually a local wood fire van, um, so it wasn't a BT van. This van was made in 1994. And that's kind of amazing because I had no idea that they actually were making these that late. Now, the gentleman who's brought me this van for review today is called Aiden, and I'm very grateful to him for doing so. Now, his dad actually bought this around the same time Aiden was born. I mean, that's impressive for two reasons. Uh, number one, that means he's held on to a Maestro van for 20 years. And number two, that makes me feel incredibly old. Now, he used this as his daily runabout work van for a good number of years. But predictably, it did begin to get somewhat tatty. Things started going wrong. Things started falling apart. The dreaded tin worm began to set in. And so the decision was taken a few years ago to bring the van back to healthy and pretty much as new condition. And I'm sure you guys will agree with me from the exterior shots that they have pretty much succeeded. Now, this wasn't a simple cosmetic restoration job either. This vehicle was originally powered by a two liter naturally aspirated diesel engine, which is a terrifying sounding prospect. It now, however, has a two liter turbo diesel, but which is a period correct thing because it came from a Maestro car, the turbo diesel car version. Now, it's not putting out an awful lot of power. We guess about maybe 70 horsepower or so. This is the era, of course, you remember when diesels were not chosen for their performance at all. Diesel was very much an oddball choice, especially in a car. And so the entire powertrain was swapped in basically a day. So Aiden's very hands-on. He runs a business here in Great Yarmouth doing all sorts of things, mostly performance orientated to cars. And his workshop's filled with all sorts of interesting things, old BMWs, Subarus, that kind of stuff. So there's a lot of nice stuff in there. And this van, they've decided to kind of just, just lightly sort of almost resto mod it. So the only giveaway from where I'm sitting that this is not entirely original are the JVC head unit down here and the fact that it moves actually pretty well. Now, this has a five-speed manual gearbox and I was surprised to learn that actually a five-speed manual is what it had originally. It also pulls okay. Now, like all old turbo diesels, you do need to give it a few revs to get it to move, but it does so surprisingly well. Of course, one has to remember that most vans weren't really that quick up until pretty recently. The gear change in this is, it's actually fine. It's not the best in the world. I get a little bit spoiled sometimes by getting to operate these wonderful, fine, slick changes, but the box doesn't protest at all. You can pick a gear pretty easily. It's just a slightly long and ever so slightly wobbly throw, which is probably exactly how it was when this van left the factory, if not better. They've done all the bushings, all the sort of stuff in there. Of course, everything in here is pretty much 
standard Maestro van, as far as I can see, including the amazing sort of weirdy kind of brown dash. I mean, in honesty, if you told me that this was a 1970s vehicle, I probably would believe you. Um, and that, that tells you really how long in the tooth the Maestro van was at the time. And I've no doubt things like the Ford Escort and so on were giving these a very hard time in the showrooms. And when they finished off, well, I think they, uh, they deserve being put to pasture. And the funny thing with vans in particular is that although people may grow attached to them in some way, shape or form, there's almost never enough love for them for people to actually want to keep them on the roads. They're not something that people ever generally aspire to. They're not like a particularly sexy thing. And that's what makes finding examples like this so amazing and so unusual. This thing is not that bad. And I say that in the nicest possible way. It's like, I think most people would look at something with a Maestro badge on it and just instantly think total heap of shit. And, and it really, really isn't. And I, I think that this car, if I saw this at a classic show, I would definitely have to, to stop and talk to the people that had it because it's such an unusual and a different thing and that's something I will always celebrate because why not? This thing also, by the way, is ludicrously practical. I mean, considering the vehicle itself isn't massive, you know, it's not, it's not vast, but the load space in the back is incredible. You can get a full-size fridge freezer in the back easily. You know, you'd get a massive plasma TV in the back there, no problem. And that's quite remarkable, really, if you compare it to say something like the modern minivan that Mini did a few years ago, which has basically enough room for a ream of A4 paper and a couple of roses. That's, that's remarkable. This is actually a very practical thing. So I can see why people like these. They did apparently a crew cab conversion for them as well. And it's something I should probably ask you guys about because I was talking to Aiden and his dad about it. They have a set of fancy bumpers available for this. And they're from the Maestro Turbo car. And we were talking about whether they should actually go on this or not. So would you guys do that? Would you alter this further? Would you put some more aggressive bumpers and things on it? Or would you leave it as standard? My personal feeling is I would leave it as is. They've done just enough to make it modern and drivable and nice. You've got a decent sound system in here that's very well hidden. There's some six by nines and things in here and you would never know barring the head unit down here. Heater and all that jazz works just fine. All the gauges work just fine. The speedo is absolutely rock solid, which is quite nice for an older vehicle. I think this thing actually, it's just, I, I can't imagine I'd ever really have spoken about something like a maestro with any sort of positivity, but I, I do love being surprised when I do these things. There's actually a lot of charm about this. Maybe it's something, maybe it's because it is a van and, 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 and not a car. I mean, maybe, I think a maestro car I would kind of look down upon and be like, eh. But the van's got this complete and total lack of pretentiousness about it. It's just such a kind of affable, lovable thing. And it's actually, I'm really shocked. I saw pictures of this before I saw the vehicle itself and I am blown away by the condition that it is in. These guys, it's a credit to them how nicely turned out this thing is. I mean, I, I get to drive and see an awful lot of vehicles of all sorts of different price points with owners with, with you know, uh, different financial resources available to them. But this thing is a labor of love. You know, the, the, the blood, sweat and tears of the owners is in this thing. And that I think makes it even more appealing to know that, you know, that they've done that, that the engine they put in them very selves over a very long day, I'm sure. Um, and it also makes me extra grateful that they kind of allow me to play with essentially their child. Um, and it's just a, it's just a bit different. And I really love it for that. What do you guys think? Is it kind of quirky and charming or is it just an old, an old van? Because you know what? Old vans are kind of cool. 
And if ever I was going to have reviewed a vehicle that would make my old buddy Laurie incredibly jealous, I think this would be it. I think this would be, this would be the only thing that I could drive that maybe would make him even more jealous would be an old Ford Sierra because he has this sort of weird fixation with those. So there we have it. I have now driven an Austin, or Rover rather, they were Rover later there, Austin earlier, Maestro van. I didn't think I'd ever say that. I really didn't think I'd say I kind of like it. But I do. So there we have it. I hope you guys have enjoyed today's little video. I'm going to enjoy trundling this van along because we have an absolutely glorious day. I'm sure most people would choose to be in a little MX-5 or something like that, or maybe even an old Triumph Spitfire if you want to go a bit, bit British Leyland on it. I'm kind of happy to be bimbling along in this. Hit that subscribe button. Please like, do comment below, and I'll see you all for the next one. Bye-bye.